Prime Minister Narendra Modi made history this November when he became the first Indian Prime Minister to address the UK Parliament. Yet, in contrast to the red carpet the government rolled out, the people of London protested in the streets, demanding answers to the alleged growing intolerance towards minority groups and voices of dissent in India. The persecution of religious minorities was perhaps the loudest cry on the streets. So is India threatening the religious freedom it promises in its constitution? First, one major change in India that has affected the socio-political climate is its shifting demographics. While still a predominantly Hindu culture, India has seen the number of religious minorities rise, and along with it, anti-Muslim and anti-Christian sentiments, including within the Prime Minister's own party, the BJP. As one member of the BJP expressed, for the first time, the population of Hindus has been reported to be less than 80%. We have to take measures to arrest the decline. It is very important to keep the Hindus in majority majority in the country. This reasoning seems to be behind paternalistic legislative action intended to stop people from converting away from Hinduism, stripping power away from citizens' religious choice. The bill threatened religious freedom under the guise of protecting against forced conversion, essentially arguing that individuals who converted from Hinduism to other religions were either forced or bribed to do so. Some BJP members have also publicly called on Hindu women to have at least four or five children to protect the Hindu religion. Religion. This helps explain why others have gone as far as calling the government the Hindu Taliban, arguing that party members are influenced by the inherently intolerant, illiberal, coercive, and regressive ideology of the Hindutva or Hindu extremists. Perhaps in an effort to distance himself from Hindutva-leaning groups like the RSS, Modi has remained silent, though not without criticism. Some have even been less kind, accusing Modi of being in tacit agreement with these groups, citing he is an RSS veteran steeped in its teachings. And reports of oppressive activities throughout the country involving local governments and police departments are not helping combat this image either. According to Amnesty International, a journalist was unjustly arrested in India for exposing police brutality against a minority group. In their report, the United States government cites the arrest and holding of a Muslim cleric for offending religious sentiments as an example of structural and institutional violence against religious minorities. And on separate occasions, police have reportedly turned a blind eye to Hindu mobs that lynched people for eating beef because it went against their religious beliefs. But India's intolerance goes beyond religious conflict. India's image has been marred by rampant reports of rape and aggression towards women, silencing of minority voices, and removal of thousands of NGOs, which are seen as un-Indian. It comes as no surprise then that though Modi's recent pronouncements in London that India will not tolerate intolerance and the law will deal with it strictly, the international community remains skeptical.